do not ever give up the early game fight. They are playing so, so aggressive on the roam and on the roam clear as well. And I think on Chalet, that's going to be made even scarier. Sandbox starting with the first operator ban. And the Brava! We're finally seeing something Whoa. different from Sandbox. What did I say before? 17 of the last 21 maps they've played. I believe that'll now be 19 of the last 23. They've banned the Nook. And here it comes with that Brava. Wow, that's so exciting. I, I wonder what they've read into. That Brava is so important to ban out on this map in particular. It makes me so curious. And you know, Dev, I'm never going to know. That makes me it so sad. We could, I could speculate all that I wanted to about why the Brava's gone. Maybe it's so that they can clear the shields more easily. Maybe it like disables all my magnets and Jaeger ADSs and whatever it might be. But like, really, I would have absolutely no idea what the true intention behind it is. Once again, the Ying being taken out does uh, close off one point of frustration, of course, for the defense. It's actually talent that have decided to ban it out, even though they're starting out on the attack themselves. And really, I feel like you've got all the like, essential tools left in for both sides, especially with that Bravo ban coming out. I think Azami certainly downplays the flexibility of some of these defender setups, but it's nothing that can't be supplemented without something like a castle. Well, 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 here we go to the final map of the series and Sandbox begin on their defensive side, taking us to bar and stage, or bar stock rather. Attacking side, the Nomad presence. There's nothing particularly crazy I'm looking at here. The dock is a bit unusual. We've got one shield to play around for the defense, which is a couple less than usual. It's going to be that top of library stairs shield. Nothing mezzanine. His army banned out. He's one of the powerful operators on this map for the defense, but uh, it's going to be difficult, I think, to defend this map without her. I actually kind of rate the dock pick a bit. I imagine that Mephi is probably going to sit there in the corner of the library, oh, of course, right? Be... He's got the bailiff, yep. so he can make his own lines of sight. Got the 1.5 time scope, so you can see real far. And you can stim yourself up as well for when those grenades come through. It's, I reckon that would be a very fun place to play if I was Mephi in his shoes. Anyway, I'm going to stop pretending if you like that stress. I wish that I was in the server. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you, if you like stress, but <laughs> then you want to be mepping right now in a spot. Anyway, Talon, they're starting out their attack onto this bomb site, and they're immediately getting a look in straight away. Drones inside, trying to see if there are any anchors ready for someone to try and jump in nice and early. It doesn't seem like they're going to be sweeping from solo across. They're immediately going to be looking towards library, and there it is. Mephi caught in 4K in the corner of library. I know he's there, but what are they going to be able to do about him? He's got ADSs, I believe. I'm not sure exactly where they are. There you go. Perfectly timed. He's actually going to fall back already. Not keen to stick around for too long as the nades go down. That is a very efficient clear from Talon of that library position. And Mephi has decided to rotate right back up now. Even though they have burnt a set of nades on the corner library position, there is a whole other shield to deal with inside of the library box. So only one more set of nades on the side of Kanos. You've also got the two explosives on Misa that would be in tandem to try and clear out this position. But you don't have a whole lot of stuff left to burn with. You've got the, you've got the flashbangs on the buck, but if, if the buck serves me right in the memory, he's on this double window, right? So he's a bit far to make that burn work onto the shield inside of box. Sandbox can't afford to put a foot wrong in these positions. There's so many places that if you misstep, you will be vulnerable. So many great drones from Talon as well. We saw that one up at the top of the rafters in Fireplace. The upside down repel now as well. You know exactly where Good Boy is playing this position at Mezzanine. So much more so difficult to actually clear him though. Yeah, I think that's ex that's exactly what I was going to say. I feel like Talon are in a point where they realize they have the info, but not the utility to clear this top floor anymore. They've kind of burned everything trying to get rid of that library corner, and there's still like two or three plays in that top floor. So now they're starting to look at the site instead. We've got Sayora. He's got the diffuser, and he's having a look in. He's like, boys, there's one guy inside of storage. Surely no. we can make this work, but apparently not. Kanos going down to a frost mat spells disaster for Talon. That is very awkward, but Sayora has done a lot of damage on site. And V Taylor making it a 1v1. Roy Boy immediately to respond. A close round to kick off Chalet. 
Oof, a bit of a tight one for Talon. I liked what they were able to do and pivot where they realized that they had nothing left through the mid-round. So they had to go for something like a flood rather than continuing to play the, the trades. And with that utility game, they could no longer send anything in. And so they'll send themselves in instead. They make that flood work onto the bomb site, the ground floor flood, as all of the players were inside of that top Jack floor and the surrounding, uh, I, I suppose the way that they were able to choke out these defenders just worked out in their favor. Now going down to the basement for Sandbox, not looking to dwell on bar games any longer, and a very information-heavy setup. We've got the Solus, Mephi is now on the drone hunt, already taken down by uh, Demic. We also have that Valkyrie from Envy Taylor, and uh, on a bomb site like this, you already need to bring so much hard breach and enablers for the hard breach, that it's going to be hard to afford to bring something like an IQ to counter that Valkyrie as well. From the lineup that Talon have brought, it would indicate to me that they are looking for a more direct attack. We've got the double hard breach, so not only can they work the main breach wall, but you can also send someone else over nice and early to start working on the back side of the map instead. There we go, the ace, in fact, spawning over towards that big garage very quickly and early on in the round. So it would indicate to me that, yes, although the Valkyrie cameras are out there and although there is a roam presence from Envy, it's not going to be so much avail for what the attack of Talon are bringing. Unless they decide to clear it, they're actually repelling up for it. This is ambitious, going for a full map clear. We do have Mises Dockerby to enable a bit of information gathering. Anos on the Nook as well, something that has been banned a lot previously by Sandbox. Left in could enable a bit of a lurk. As we see the main Snowmobile breach opened up without too much of a hassle. So the important thing to keep in mind if Talon do what I think they are going to do and pivot towards this backside is that they, they unfortunately need to make sure that dining is clear so that no one can look down that hatch and it seems like actually Talon are going to pivot rather than going to the other side straight away for this full map control aided by the Dokubi. Unfortunately Kanos has not been able to inject himself into the building off the back of the drones and there are still two or three roamers at large. Still fairly quiet moment in this mid-round now as Talon continue to make this map control theirs. Sandbox don't contest too aggressively. It's Mephi here on the back of the blue stairs, waiting for another player. He's already found one from this position. Good boy is there to support him. Arakaze. Oh, he goes down as Misa finds a double. Mephi's been taken out. Man advantage squarely in the favor of Talon before Good Boy brings it back to his side. Can he cross back to site safely though? He's uncertain. His teammates already fallen there in blue. There's so much info for Talon, but time is dwindling. There is a minute left on the trot, and Sayora is going to use his final exothermic charge to open up that con hatch. What that means is this side of the snowmobile garage Aww. is completely exposed, but Demic being able to take down Misa with a C4 from below is going to make this execute very challenging, but not something that Talon haven't done before. I'm fl getting flashbacks right now, Dev. That split double hatch drop. I feel like you can never count these guys out. Oh, we've seen them pull off a 2v5, so a 2v3 doesn't look too ambitious in their eyes. Good boy now, waiting for the flashes to come through. Nothing affecting him as of yet. He hears the players coming down the main stairs. He gets full flash, but he's in the perfect position as Demic on the long angle cannot cover well enough. Siora and Marble are making this work in the 2v2 now. Siora though flanked above, which makes it impossible now. Marble trying to force this diffuser down, but this... Position is revealed, read into, and dispatched with by Demic. Sandbox find their first defense. Nice from Sandbox. Unfortunately, I think Talon went for something pretty ambitious with what they tried to do there. Yes, they tried to aid the Nook with the Jokubi to go for the Roam Clear. But even by the time that they went for the Roam Clear, there wasn't a whole lot of time to make things work at the end. And I think Sandbox just stayed more composed towards the mid to late round, even though the trades were a bit spooky through the mid-round, of course, and I think just able to close out the round. I don't think anything too special on the side of the defense, just sometimes the execute like that doesn't quite work out, sometimes the roam clear like that doesn't quite work out, even though it's aided, and even though it's informed. Well, Talon now going to have to deal with a different bomb site. Wait, are we going upstairs? I thought for a second... 
Are we going to master? I thought we were actually going yeah, to dining. Master. I think they changed it last minute. Um, I saw the, uh, I don't speak Korean, but I saw the, uh, the bombsite choice. It had a one in it, which I assume meant first floor, which would either be bar or dining. But there you go. We're actually going back. Sorry, going to Master for the first time. Now, this bomb site can be devilishly difficult to defend. Once attackers get that big window control, they can cut the bomb site in two. Well, keep in mind that is what the aid of the castle of Arakaj would bring to this defense. He's trying to segment off any of these cutoffs that the attack might be playing, making sure that even though there might be someone on the windows, they can't see into a power position that the defenders might be holding. Talon are going to start their attack as well onto the bomb side and onto the map in, in its totality, sweeping across from the library side. Good boy as well with that souls is going to be able to call out that there is no one in fact lurking inside of trench and that would indicate to the defense, okay, maybe they are going for that sweep and there's already two players with sandbox to meet them. Actually quite a scary hold as well from Sandbox Dev. Like, I mean, look at the shield inside of that hallway and big long lines of sight on the main breach too. It could be quite scary to try and sweep into this if you're Talon. Yeah, very aggressive here. Talon spotted it. Are they prepared to deal with it as of yet? Mephi playing on the blue stairs. Quite an aggressive position just below library. Ready to hold that crossfire with Arakaze. In comes... Explosives from Marble on the Zof. A bit of a love tap there onto the shield. Prefacing the clear. In comes the concussion, signaling that there is in fact no utility to protect this shield. Well, keep in mind, even if Marble tries to move forwards into this position, there is a crossfire being held on the library stairs, and that's Murphy playing that position to perfection, taking down Roy Boy. Not only that, but Demic can double down onto Marble. Oh, no. There we go, Arakaze there for that trade as well, and actually not even for the trade. I thought that Murphy might have gone down with how low HP he is, but he's actually still holding on to his position steadfast, and so even though he has his line of sight trained onto it, can't quite connect the shots. Two impacts to come out, and it's disaster. It's explosive. Or Sandbox. It's Talon that needs those nades right now to clear out these positions, but they have nothing to get it done. Siora is going to have to get desperate now. I think Mephi's read into this perfectly as well. A pre-fire, but Siora nails him between the eyes. 2v4. Down from a 2v5. Misa on the balcony, waiting for a player to reveal their head. Still this player on the shield. I mean, there's just no way they can clear off that. Surely, there you go, Arakaze. An easy peek, the retrade. There you go. From Misa. Picking up that diffuser now. Gonna have to be some unreal shots with that G36 in the 1v3. 20 seconds. But I just don't see this one working out for him, Andy. Unfortunately, neither do I. There's not a whole lot of time, but he's been given ten one with 10 left to go. 10 seconds left to go, rounding half all now. Can't connect the shots onto Demic, and he can take him down with the SMG-11 to the head. It's two defenses now for Sandbox. Starting to look pretty comfy here on Chalet. A map that, like you said in the pre-show, does tend to be reasonably attacker-sided. That said, if we look at these teams, both of them statistically better on their defense than on their attack. Talon at a 64 uh, And Sandbox, funnily enough, actually nearly a 60% defense win rate, despite only having uh, having won this map one out of the last four times they played it. I must say, though, for Talon, we saw some border one or two times as well, but they, they seem to really take the path of most resistance. <laughs> Once they have an idea for their attack, Regardless of how much resistance is there for Talon, they really go for it. I mean, once you jump in library there, you kind of have two choices to make, right? You, you've seen the setup and you go, okay, this is a bit scary. Maybe we don't go for this and we go for a solar side take instead. Or you say, we're going to use our utility and actually clear it out. And every single time without fail, even on border, Talon have gone, we are going to be up to the challenge and we'll actually try and clear it out. And every single time that they've tried to do that, it hasn't quite worked out in, in the sandbox setup. It makes me wonder for Talon, will they ever get to this point where they're actually going to bring like adaptability to their attacks? Like uh, Maybe it's too much speculating about why the defense half might be better. Maybe way too much speculating, but it's certainly a curious thought for me. Well, it's salient speculation because they're on the attack right now and they've just lost two rounds in a row. As we move over to dining, New bomb site picked by Sandbox. 
I think you've hit the nail on the head. Talon has to be careful not to fall into the traps that Sandbox set before them. Turning out once again for this library side sweep into the map. The bomb site this time being oh, kitchen and dining so to translate their push down one floor, but Mephi through the wall can take down Kanos trying to enter in through the double window of games. And that's three rounds in a row that Mephi has opened the exchange for Sandbox. Third opening kill in a row. Kanos actually yet to find himself on the scoreboard whatsoever for Talon. You can actually see, I think that's Nova in the background behind Good Boy. It must be something else, just playing in a team house environment, even having your coach behind you as you play. Utility starting to rain out as the entry comes through into library, but once again, Dev Talon playing into the hands of Sandbox. A crossfire inside a library is too much to overwhelm the entry. <laughs> Mephi to clean up the third, the man of the hour, as Sandbox go up another round. He opens the round, he closes it as well. Sandbox are looking fine here on Chalet. Three rounds in a row, forcing Talent to reconsider their options on the attacking side. They got two more chances, and they take this tactical timeout. You know, Dev, I think I'm sticking with my thing. Maybe my thing was speculation with, with how they're playing into the hands of Sandbox and really falling into the trap of their defense. But I feel like that round honestly proves what we, what we were speculating. It's They've done it twice now, and now they're taking their tactical time out to try and deconstruct the way that Sandbox are playing. I'm hoping that going into the next one, Talon will take a little bit more time to, to gather info on exactly what Sandbox are going for and try and identify a weakness in the strategy rather than playing into the strengths of it, because really they're setting themselves up for failure, in my opinion. They're walking into crossfires that are very well established for the defense, and they don't have quite the sufficient utility to clear it without just having their gun up or, and walking at them. Well, at least Talon have now had a chance to chat about it. And both of the times they've taken tactical timeouts in the series, they've delivered immediately on the back of it. In fact, it was, uh, it was on the first map, they took it on their own match point. The second map, they took it when they were 6-2 down, they brought it back to 6-4 before losing the map. Here, if they can get two in a row, Mandy, and go three rounds apiece at the end of their attacking half, I think that would be quite exceptional considering how strong Sandbox's defenses have been, not only in this match, but historically, the previous appearances they've played Chalet in a defended team. So, Talon, critical round for them. I think that's exactly right. They still have two more chances to try and even up this half, and really, Talon want to be able to get as many rounds on the board as they possibly can. Once again, Sandbox moving over onto this bar and games bomb site, I believe it is, uh, aided with the double shield set up inside of that top floor, will make it pretty challenging for Talon to clear. Now, previously, Talon sunk a lot of utility into clearing that corner library position. It doesn't seem like Mephi's going to be playing that again with the dock and handle. That was quite exciting to watch. Um, instead, he's going to be playing that Wumai on what is a shield set up for the roam clear instead, already poised on that double door, looking towards the solar side clear of the map. Yeah, we have a second shield this time in the sandbox lineup. We didn't have both last time. Wow, Roboy actually somehow managed to keep his drone alive. Emmy Taylor didn't quite spot it. So some info there. Oh, is he going to see the drone? I think it's still in the corner. Oops. Oh, it yes, totally is. Up. Oh, he's seen it. He's seen it. Interesting from Sandbox. They've actually extended out into the top floor, anticipating that Talon are going to go for a sweep across wow. the map. But what this means is it's given them a massive hole inside of Lyrie to jump in, and that's Marble able to take down Good Boy on the entry. What an unusual and dangerous defensive setup that Talon has capitalized upon, Mandy. You said it. They found the path of least resistance. Finally. Now they've got the numbers advantage. Envy Tail has been forced to retreat. Mephi trapped here on the stairs as full library control and control of the top floor has been seceded to Talon. Minute and 30 counting down for Talon on this attack and they even have info on the bomb side. It's going to aid Boy Boy in his mission to open up the floor above and cut down on any anchors that might be residing left inside of the bomb site. Misa as well can start to put down that horizontal pressure and Envy, he's so far off from his teammates looking to regain some of that top floor control. We said this was a critical round for Talon and it looks like they heard. 
They're poised to take this. There's no way they should be losing this one. But it falls apart piece by piece. Misa goes down. MV Taylor's flank unsuccessful. Mephi and Arakaze to hold on site. But both of them have had an impact. It's all up to Mephi now in the one versus one. As Roy Boy goes hunting, 40 seconds left to play with. As he picks up that diffuser, Mephi nowhere to be seen. But so many good drones on the board for Talon. Will they know his position as Mephi retakes? A spray through and a successful bait now. Roy Boy forced to play the trade. And Mephi, against all odds, makes it work for Sandbox. Denying Talon converting that tactical timeout and completing that 2v4. Oh, Talon, they were so close, yet so far, Dev. They made such a successful clear of that top floor, identifying that so much of Lyrie had been forfeited to them. But when push came to shove, when they tried to jump into the site, they didn't consider it was the Warden that they were flashbanging out to make that execute work. And when he turns on those Google glasses, he shuts that down. And that was Arakaze in that pivotal position to really open up that 1v1 for Mephi, who really played that to perfection in the almost post blind situation as well. So really tight round there and unfortunately goes in the swing of Sandbox. And what a defense for Sandbox. They've just done the successful round the world. Four different bomb sites, one in a row. Snow, Master, Kitchen, and Bar now going back up to Master. They have control of this game, Mandy, and Talon have no tactical timeout left to call upon. When things get dire, they need to find a second attack round here in order to have a chance of going into their defensive half with a shot at the Major. Okay, look, but you said it. Talon, they're starting to figure it out. They're starting to get big brain. Okay, never mind. And this just taking down someone on the spawn peak. I completely cursed them in that moment. You know who's big brain? Oh, I was going to say. Sandbox are. They're in their heads, maybe. Yeah, apparently they're in their heads. Living rent-free right now. <laughs> and he's even going to look for a C4 lineup onto the repel. Oh, tosses it out. No and it way. Disgusting this, from Envy. This man is ice cold on Chalet right now. A 5v3. Talon are looking absolutely lost. What are they going to find here? Sandbox in full control. To close out the half in a 5-1 would be unreal. Oh, I was giving them so much credit, Dev. I was like, in that last round, they definitely did the right thing. They identified the weakness. They hopped in. This round, they get double spawn peaked by one man. Envy Taylor, of course. Marble, though, he can start to make his way in through the basement, but the Solace has seen that push. And so his push... Will be made known he's being very silent about it very sneaky and he might be able to catch the solace off guard that's good boy on the other side p90 in hand but he seems to have an idea of where marble is and vice versa marble is clearing these angles very well but good boy has got it 2v5 now not enviable position for canos and sayora Good boy's running rampant on this ground floor. The soul is to get him info, denying these drones. Oh, look at Roy that. Roy boy's just the desperately from looking Envy. for a pick. I mean, he can't jump in this window. There's no way. No, no way. Absolutely not. Envy's seen him through the vertical. He's come to Good Boy. What's going on? It's not looking so good. And Roy boy with the DMR in hand is trying to cut down here and create some space for Canos. And it might work, actually. Backstab to come through, potentially. I think he's baited it perfectly now. Oh, no, no way! way! You have got to be kidding me, good boy! The young boy has it in the bag for Sandbox. That's 5-1 on the half due to some heroics from the oldest and youngest members of this roster. That's not real. Good boy's the best boy. He, <laughs> he does a 180 flick onto someone crouched walking through the map and takes down Roy Boy, of course. Arch nemesis in names. There can only be one best boy <laughs> in this series. And right now, that's good boy for Sandbox. Need to I just cannot believe off. what they were able to achieve in that round. That round looks silly, Dev, from start to end. Absolutely silly business. There is no market for business that silly. Especially from Envy. <laughs> that was ridiculous. There is a market, and it's called the Major. And Sandbox find themselves two rounds away from it.
The Talon, though, the repercussions of losing this are dire. This isn't a simple double elim bracket where if Talon lose, they have another shot at the major. No, they lose this game. That's knockouts done, and they will go and have to play the last chance qualifier. They'll be fighting some damn good teams because one of either D plus or Pantera will be in that LCQ as well. Only three of these four massive teams from Korea can make it to the major, and it looks like Sandbox may have Talon's number. They may be the first one to book their tickets to Copenhagen. Oh, and it is so exciting that we have four teams that are in contention for this, right? Typically, Korea has been super top heavy. We've constantly sent Sandbox. We've constantly sent D plus Kia to Majors. Now we have Talon and now we have Pantera in the story as well. And it feels so sad that we're going to not be able to send one of them. I just want to send all four of them, Dev. I can't believe we have to say bye to one of them. Anyway, going into this possibly uh, almost near match point attack for Sandbox as they start to formulate their way around the map. Now, Mephi is on the glass and that scares me. Effie's been such a phenomenal player for Sandbox throughout the series. He's one of the forefront of these entries and is proved versatile with his play on these disruptors like the Glaz, his execute operators. Talon trying to hold on to this top floor, but Marble's been caught out. Is he going to be able to get away with his life? He does just barely, but at what cost? The cost of a lot of his HP, not only that, but Good Boy with a lurk through the ground floor can successfully take down Sayora. Now, uh, something critical there is that's the mute going down, okay? And that's the C4 player that would have been playing inside of Dino. Oh so my god. When, when Sandbox want to go for that execute, if they want to go for that default plan, they no longer have to worry about a C4 from below. That's been taken down nice and early. The pebble started falling on border, but it's becoming an avalanche here for Sandbox. Talon desperate. Struggling to even shoot out drones, they're being toyed with. And it's desperation now as the breach has opened. A smoke from Roy Boy in reply. But he's caught out in a difficult position. Crossfires enabled for Sandbox. And this is going to be difficult for Roy Boy to hold on to. He's taken down by the entry of Demic as well. Arakaja can start to send in that diffuser with plenty of cover. But the response now from Kanos. He's found two. Picking up his teammate as well. So this could be a 2v3. That P90 is a headshot machine. Good Boy's oh, coming good boy's up for the flank him. though from the stairs. And indeed he does find it. And with that, Nova out of his chair. He knows full well that Sandbox are one round away from booking their tickets to Copenhagen. Oh, such exciting stuff here, Dev! What a clean attack that was from Sandbox too. The roam clear was made to perfection. Good boy taking down what was the critical part of the late game defense for Talon meant that Arakage was super comfy walking in with Demic as well onto the bomb site. There was nothing to stop him from getting that plant down in the end. And even though there was the solace on the board, she couldn't do anything from her position. It was just so fantastic from Sandbox to play a very disciplined attack. And Talon looking like in shambles. Only one round to their name. It's not looking good for their chances to the Major. No, it's hard to cut it any other way. Sandbox have been all over Talon this map. Would you believe, Manny, this is six rounds straight for Sandbox. Talon really lulled us into a false sense Incredible. of security in the opening round by taking that bar games. But even that was just a 1v1. Ever since then, it has been sandbox all day long. Talon took a tactical timeout. Didn't matter for a damn thing. Here we have sandbox on the cusp of once again returning to the international stage. And what, just what a roller coaster of emotions you must be feeling if you're Demic right on sandbox you you've gone into this best of three series almost lost this best of three series you dropped a map to your former team but redemption has been made on this map for him and wow he's having such a good game six and three great score line from him as well and now they can start to amount what could be their final attack in the series to send them to the major starting to utility dump inside of this library position no one to be met in the corner yet but on the other side is canos with the warden in hand Demic using these air jabs to prevent the retake. It could be an explosive execute for Sandbox. Demic had big shoes to fill when Static retired. He might find himself debuting 
on the international stage at this upcoming major. Still the 5v5, still Sandbox. Poking and proding the bomb site. And this extended setup up top that Talent have prepared. What are they going to go for here? So, uh, Arukaje has got the diffuser in hand, and he's identified that the bomb site is, in fact, clear bar two frost mats right below him on the window jumping. Keep an eye on that one. There's only one player in stock, and I believe that isn't the warden player of Kanos. So he is upstairs instead. So, if Sandbox want to, they, they could utility flood into the bomb site here. They really only have one person to worry about, and Good Boy's even going to come in from the backstab from the lobby side as well. So, scary for Talon. You can see the call from Envy. The temptation has sunk in. They've got the itch. They're going to look for this execute. The flash is to go in. Roy Boy tossing his C4. It's time to perfection. And Talon explode into action. 2v3 now. Nephi has redeemed the round with a double kill, a triple kill. He's 12 and 3 right now. Who is this madman? And going silent as well with the nook in hand. Two on two now. A player on library stairs, but info <sighs> plenty. Marble though, he wins out the gunfight. Now Envy in the one on two. Marble has gone for the rotation. Roy Boy alone on site for now. As Envy Taylor has snuck his way in, and Roy Boy has got him. Talon do not go down without a fight. They finally stem the bleeding after six rounds. Cop in the L, they finally find something to hook onto. Talon remembering just how much is on the line in these next few rounds if they want to stay in that conversation for the Major. It is not over for them yet as they're able to claw back another defense for Sandbox. Yes, it was an informed push, but the, the, the flashbangs didn't quite sink into the position inside of storage and that enabled that C4 to go off. Really, all of the collapse points for Sandbox didn't really work out in their favor. All the gunfights working in the hands of Talon and now they can go over to kitchen and dining instead, but at the cusp of match point, major point. That's gonna have to be a lot of denied match points here for Talon to get back to OT. It just seems so far from possibility. That was, despite everything, still a very close round. As you said, Mandy, it was just the slightest of missed flashes that meant that round was for, Sam uh, for Talon and not for Sandbox. Talon are going to have to show that they've got some gusto on these other bomb sites as well. Here we go, kitchen and dining, the next point of contest. And what are Sandbox going to do here? They seem to be pretty good at, at being able to take the real estate that they can off the map and then go from there. They don't ever seem to have a clear plan of like, we're going to do this and we're going to put the bomb down here. It just seems to be, what can we get? What, what can we identify as the weak points in the defense, the path of least resistance? And then let's go from there. Unfortunately, with this Valkyrie in hands of Mesa, it's going to make it quite challenging for Sandbox to be more unpredictable on this attack. They're going to have much more info on the defense to be able to tell where the drone's going in, where, where the entry is coming from. So Talon will have a little bit more margin of error and, and time to respond to that. Effie's boots on the ground. This guy is just insane. 12 and 4. Unreal. 3.0 KD and still working it. He's the tip of the spear here for Sandbox as he's made his way into library. Time to drone out and see what there is to clear. So keep an eye on the flanks, of course. So he's just playing a bit of flank watch at the moment, it seems. Plenty of ingredients now for Sandbox to reach onto the site with the Thatcher and the Thermite. They're just going to make sure that they don't get flanked while that action goes down. And nice once again from Sandbox, N not taking what they don't need to, not taking any early unnecessary gunfights, realizing there are no roamers, in fact, in that library side. But what they need to worry for is that they could be caught 4K. In fact, there is a Valkyrie camera that is facing towards that mezzanine around that piano double position. That's Misa, and that's going to inform him exactly when to get aggressive on that breach, exactly when Ooh. the attack is not going to be looking at him. Marvel as well could double down. The temptation is there for Mesa, but the player on the balcony is his biggest threat. And the Taylor can cut him off, even if he could sneak out and get a kill or two. It would be traded, and that wouldn't be enough. We're not actually master. I'm crazy. I thought we were master the whole time. It's actually down oh, in no. dining. And good boys found good the boy. opener! Wow. 
Scary times for Talon. He's able to rip a grenade out and start to get this main stairs control. Not only that, but the breach is about to be made wide open for the attack. There's no need to sweep through this top floor, Dev. They have cover a plenty with all five players up for this execute that could come through. Good boy will continue to be a thorn in their side. Repairing the sneak up West Main on the lurk. Mephi to cover as well. But Misa has found one from the vert above. Demic has gone down. Arakaze still has that diffuser. 20 seconds to play with as he finds the opener. And the push comes to shove for Sandbox. They erupt onto the site, forcing Misa in the 1v3 to retake to save the game. But Sandbox are here. They're knocking on the door and they say there's no chance that a Korean team goes to a major. And it ain't us. Misa now in the 1v2. Arakaze and Good Boy together in kitchen to cook up a storm, but they have cooked themselves a spot in Copenhagen. Sandbox deliver the goods. A hard fought 2 1 victory, but Talon will not stand in their way. They're going back to the major. And they look absolutely ecstatic about it. Such dominant fashion to close out the series 2 to 1. And like you said, the behemoths of Korea are going to go back to the international scene. They're going to play on that world stage and represent us here.